Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. Still looking at some challenges from the SneakCon Fetch the Flag or their Capture the Flag event that they hosted with SneakCon, their free virtual online conference from October 5th to October 7th. So let's dive in. I'll hop over to my computer screen here and we'll take a look at this challenge called the Random Flag Generator. I am in a directory that I've already created for this specific challenge and right now the game scoreboard is offline so I can't view the challenge's description right on the site, but I do have the description that is ready and available for us. There was no challenge prompt here. It just gave us some files to download. So we had a log.txt and a generate.py. So let's take a look at that source code here, a generate.py. Looks like we import the random library, the time library, and the hash lib library. So we're likely going to be generating random numbers, knowing what the time is and hashing things. So we seed a random number generator Interestingly enough, based off of the current time, time.time .time will return the Unix epoch time uh, as quickly as it could with actually, I think, a lot of precision all the way down to some decimal values for us. And we round that to an integer number, which is actually really interesting and might be something that we could take advantage of. But let's keep reading on. If we seed our random number generator with that seed, version 2, A-OK, -okay, we could follow alongside that if we wanted to recreate this. And then while true, over and over and over again, we'll keep looping, generating random numbers and then hashing something out here, hashing the SHA-256 string of the random number as hex bytes, and then a flag being generated and created, wrapping the sneak kind of a flag format around that given hash. And we check, oh, if 5BC is in the hash, odd, then we'll go ahead and write that flag out to the file and have a break statement that will close this loop. So after that loop ends, it says, oh, flag created, ta-da, and we'll have a random value that's bad if 5BC is not present in that hash. So given the log.txt, ooh, okay, it will display the bad random value of the randomly generated string here, or the randomly generated number, and then up until it finds a value that will hash correctly and give a flag that the service wants. So we have about 23 values, it looks like, checking the line numbers that we might be able to use to sanity check if we are getting towards a right random value. Uh, noticeably though, the time is seeded. The random number generator is seeded by time. And let me actually open that up. Uh, I'll use a B Python so I could have some nice syntax highlighting. If I were to import time, as I mentioned, time.time .time will return the current epoch or seconds since the epoch. I think it's what, January 1st, 1970 or so uh, with a lot of precision and decimal values after that. But if we were to go ahead and round that value, it's going to be then an integer. Like if I run this over and over and over again, you can see that it's incrementing each second. But that means that we could kind of move backwards in time and find what the original seed might have been because it's just going to be an integer that kept counting up and presumably this ran sometime in the past. Uh, so let's create a simple get flag script. And I'm actually gonna use this code as the base for that. So I, I, I've took all the contents and just saved a copy of this. Let's say that the current time.time .time can be our beginning seed, but let's let's seed it every single time as part of the loop. So that way uh, we can modify the original seed and, and continue to loop through this. Uh, we do want to know what the original bad values were, which are all this up here. So what I'll do is I'll create a new sublime text window and I'm gonna hit control A on my keyboard to select everything. And then I'll hit control shift L so that I can have multiple cursors um, for every single line, nice and easy. I'm gonna hit uh, function home or just to bring my key all the way home with a cursor on every line. And that way I can move with my arrow keys like control left, control right to hop over words and uh, remove all that trailing text at the beginning of each line. Then if I hit end, I'll be able to add a, a comma here and I could realistically add a new square brace at the top and bottom of this here. So that way we now have all of this represented as a list or as an array that we could use in, in Python. So let's say that uh, our scene before can equal this big long thing here. Good enough. And that way we can 
check if our random value is going to end up being uh, something that's sequentially in this scene before list, right? We could, do, we could check that. Um, and we kind of want to keep track of all the ones that we had seen previously. So, hmm. Uh, how, can we, how can we smartly do that? Let's take the ran value that we've gotten and let's check if it's in there or should we just kind of count over and over again? Let's say uh, if, we, if we repeatedly found matches, we'll say, so we'll start it at zero. But for I in, I guess, len of our found matches, and we'll want to use a range on that so we can count up to that length. Uh, if we count up to that and just then keep generating our numbers in that, how about that? We can say if rnd is equal to our found matches mm, i, index that i, then we can continue because we know that we've got the right thing. But if we don't, then we should break out of this. So if we were to break out of this loop, uh, we'll be able to n detect that inside of a for loop in Python by actually supplying an else clause on our for loop. So if we exit this loop unnaturally, like if it were to break, if it were to break in that for loop, then we could hit continue on this while loop as we test another line, uh, but we'd want to subtract what our current seed value is. So let's say that seed that was up top, we'll go ahead and subtract minus one on that and then hit continue to regenerate all that. Um, if we were to continue, we would eventually get down to knowing what that last random value is. Uh, and it's going to end up being the absolute last one, right? Because that will end up being the random value after this. So I think we need to generate another one. I think that should be what we want, right? We can go ahead and just then hash our final rand and let's try and display that out. We can display that flag and actually let's go ahead and display uh, if 5BC is um, in hash. That should be a Boolean value for us just fine. So... Let's don't need to check for that anymore. We don't need to display this out. Now we are just trying to move backwards in time, subtracting one from the seed every time we haven't found the number of matches present or, or hash values that are or seed values, responded random generator numbers uh, in this list. Let's see if this works. Uh, object and type int has no len. Why are you telling me that? Len of found matches. Oh, 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 I'm screwed. I'm sorry. That should actually be our scene before. And maybe we don't even need, need to use this found matches variable anymore because we don't literally reference that whatsoever. Let's see if that works. Whoa. That's not good. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and p-kill our, our Python runner right now. Will you continue the loop here? Not thinking about it? Is that, am I not doing that right? This, con this continue should continue that while loop and get the hash. Hmm. Let's do a if 5bc is in the hash, then we can print the flag. How about that? Uh, and I'll run this in my terminal now. Get flag.py. How far are we going to end up going? If I were to actually print out what the seed is every time, will that display for me? We'll use an f string so that we can use seed equals inside of their thing and I keep typoing here forgive me how about that are we going to keep decreasing the seed no we are not seed minus one for I in range of this do we ever actually break breaking I just added another print statement here to do some quick debugging so once we break 
We have broken. How about that? Does that get displayed? That else statement never actually runs. Maybe I'm misinterpreting that right. Uh, so let's say found matches can actually be a value that we do want to use. Uh, if we can set found matches to false, if that doesn't happen. So if we have not found matches, what we can do is then continue this loop here. How about that? Seed is still not decreasing because we have not actually set that to subtract out. There we go. Now we are properly moving backwards in time. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if I keep letting this run, it will end up determining the hash value for us. I'll let this go for a little bit of time and uh, we'll see if we ever end up getting anywhere. Okay, it's been going for a while. Uh, I realize I should probably break if I want to print the flag so that that's actually displayed here. And then I might be getting this wrong just as well. I, I, I want to actually verify if we have an else, then we can print out, uh, if we were to successfully find all matches, we can print out uh, successfully found the right seed, in which case we could go ahead and print that seed and let's break on that just as well. Uh, and let's not print the seed here just to kind of speed up our, our life. Uh, so we got as far down as this. Maybe we could keep track of that. Uh, we can say seed could equal this if we really wanted to, but let's see if we were to go back in time and just let it go, will it end up finding anything better at this point? Uh, it might be a long, long time. In fact, we should actually kind of see, hey, what is this date in real date time rather than the Unix epoch time? Uh, but I'll let this just run for a little bit longer and we'll see. Okay. So we uh, end up did finding, I let it run for just a bit and it did end up finding the proper seed. And it looks like, is that even before? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is, that is before how far I had gone. I think maybe... I don't, no, 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 no. Let's do a quick Python thing. Is this greater than this? Uh, so that one that we ran previously was before it in our loop down. Okay, anyway, now that we know the proper seed, let's go ahead and actually display the flag here. We want to generate all these 23 instances again, so I'm actually going to set this here, uh, and then we could verify... Oh, exit out of Python. I want to just run the script. There we go. It knows that that is the correct seed because we found the correct hashes. Let's no longer break out of that original loop, and then let's see if we could get the hash. Oh, this, this loop goes on. So let's move this segment into the successfully found portion. There we go. Is it not showing me that hash thing? Oh, I think I need to I need to rand one more, and that's exactly why it never did it to begin with. Let's try that. There we go. Because I didn't calculate the one just after it. But finally, after a little bit of that tinkering, we did successfully find all of the uh, numbers that would have been returned by the pseudo random number generator given the seed at that time that that ran. So we were able to walk it back and then finally get this flag here uh, that should very well contain this 5BC value. So that is our flag. And we can take note of that if we really, really wanted to. We could go ahead and write that down because I'm not able to submit it on the scoreboard. But that is that challenge, and we are done. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope that script kind of made sense. Uh, what we did was, after adding a lot of debug messages to kind of get a sense of where we were, that's what you that's what you know and love, right? Candlelight debugging. We overwrote the seed after we kind of found the proper one. Otherwise, we would have just taken the time and continually moved back. But we were able to go ahead and subtract the seed one by one until we would end up finding one seed that would properly generate the same values that we had seen it fail on when this original time this generator script was ran. Uh, so kind of a clever thing to go back in time and find the flag that it had generated based off just syncing up the pseudo random number generator seed. That's it. 
Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Please, uh, you know, like the video, maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe. I'd be super duper grateful. Thanks so much. And I uh, hope you guys give Sneak some love just as well, because I put on a lot of uh, good effort to host this game. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.